Hold my soul. Baby, 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 baby. Don't you know my love is true? Honey, 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 honey. Get up off of that money. Love, 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 love. Hold my soul. Hi, Art Fine. Art Fine's Poker Party coming to you from uh, Hollywood with some pretty special guests. 10th <coughs> uh, or 20th or 100th time in on the far left, we got Skip Heller. Skip, hi. Hi, Art. It's good to see you here. You got a new new product out? Uh, yes, it's called Career Suicide, featuring uh, the great Doug Figer. Now, uh, what is this thing I'm holding it's, in my it's hand? It's an anthology of, of much of my work between 1994 and 2001. Your work? Your work is <coughs> a gar is gardener, or is a... It's a CD booklet designer. <laughs> okay, so this a CD booklet designer. So career, CD booklet so designer. career suicide is uh, a bunch of people hoping to achieve your same level of fame with your songs, right? Uh, something like that. Yes, it's all stuff that I've produced, conducted, arranged, all that. All kinds of all-star guest artists. That's right, Joey Altruda, Big Sandy, DJ Bonebreak, Yuri Kane, Robert Drasnan, Doug Figer. Lalo Guerrero and Kate. How's that for a segue? I told you, I'll be, man. I'll be stick looking with for me. this everywhere. Next to him, we got the guy from the the, uh, the album, Doug Figer. Doug, welcome to the show. Always great, Art. It's your umpteenth time in, too. It's good to see you. Umpteenth. Always good to have and you. And only here. our second time together. That's right. That's right. And then on my far right, first time in, Mr. Fred oh. Willard. Fred. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I remember several years ago, Art, you asked me, you called, and you said, Little Richard is going to be my guest. Would you like to come <laughs> in and sit in? And I said, You know, Art, I'm his biggest fan, but I just wouldn't know what to say to little Richard, and I think your fans would uh, be annoyed by my intrusion. And I regret it to this day. Did little Richard come in and sit in here? And, and he must. I think he missed that one, but I think it was somebody like little Richard. When I met you many years ago, I, I may have this wrong, but I think your emphasis as far as music was the coasters. Was that? Oh, well, they were my favorite. I mean, you can't a, a top big, I, didn't, I didn't hear any, I don't know any coasters fanatics except you. I am a coaster fanatic. Yeah. yeah. And there, I, I can't even name the different coasters. Uh, I know when one of them left, the guy uh, from the Cadillac Speedo came in, uh -huh. uh, and, and then he, he's the more popular. When you see pictures of the old coasters, Speedo is usually there. Wow. You know, Speedo. Well, they often call me Speedo, but my real name. Anyway. Never heard was his record. real name Mr. Earl? No, I don't. No. Earl, Earl. <laughs> Earl Speedo. Carroll. And I think people thought it was a drug reference. I don't <laughs> think so at the time. It was just, he was a little guy, a little peppy guy. Very funny. Uh, Do you know Gloria by the Cadillacs also? I, I, a different I, song, not G L O R A. Oh, no. no. I don't know it. Uh, but um, uh, the Cadillacs, the Cadillacs. Uh, um, Peekaboo, I'm watching. Peekaboo, that's, that's what that's, I'm that's thinking it. of. Which is a very much like a coaster song, by the yes, way. It yes, it is. Yes. Okay, we're. we're Coasters were originally. The Robinson. That's, oh, okay. God, try to stump you, huh? Okay. All right, we're jumping right in. We uh, have a lot of preliminary stuff to cover with a new guest. Uh, I have been hawking you for more than 10 years to be on, and I'm really thrilled to have you here, although you did make a terrific appearance last year and a couple other times at the Elvis show at the House at of the Blues. At the annual Art Fine tribute to Elvis, yes. I, I, you were the MC this year. It was Yes. Great. It wasn't so much for me. It was for the fans. I knew they wanted to see <laughs> someone who knew something about Elvis get up there. And, but <laughs> <laughs> there's <laughs> <it's> Art Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Someone you, who knew him other than, uh, you know, Clambake. Yeah, well, someone who goes uh, back to... <laughs> were you... Uh, you got a problem you, you with Clambake? <laughs> uh, were you scripted on that? Because you were really pretty deep. Pretty well, deep. you know, I'm a big Elvis fan, but I knew I was going to host it, so I, I looked up Elvis trivia, oh, like okay. his favorite, oh. five favorite things, just to do a filler in uh, case some band, you know, how they set up. The, so that was a verisimilitude. You, you seem to be... Knowing what you're talking about. I know a lot about Elvis, but, uh, you know, the, the trivia, uh, I, I don't really know. But you name an early song, and chances are I might know something about it. <laughs> okay. Um, we all, we're uh, covering you on a musical basis because this is a musical show. And that's well, what, I, that's that's I'm like. a big musical fan. I, it's, you're acting like I'm from the theater and just yeah, finished well, doing uh, Richard III and dropped by to talk. <laughs> that's the kind of musicals right. we're used to from that. Who did the original version of uh, uh, One Night With You, which you did on, uh, on the, that oh, night? Smile and Lose. Yo, oh, God. I, I'm, well, I, I, I give up. I'm not going to try to talk. Okay, you you're, not the, you're not the interrogator. You're the okay. interrogatee. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my question for you now. Yeah, yeah please. <clears throat> well, but my, I got a standard first question, yeah. which is uh, you grew up in Cleveland. What was the first record you bought? Oh, boy, the first one I bought, I think the Louis Jordan album. Oh, I was just wow. there. 
Young kid, and at the time, it was just before rock and roll, and at the time, Louis Jordan, uh, you know, uh, Caledonia, I mean, that was, that was, was rock and roll. And then I remember, I mean, I'm studying the roots of rock and roll, now you guys back me up. They say, and you're going to laugh at this, Andy Griffith had a song, one side was what it was was football, and the other was uh, someone's lie soap, grandma's lie soap, it was an old kind of yeah. uh, up gospel. Let's all sing along. That was for John, now that was on Capitol. That was Johnny Stanley, and it was yes. called, and it was called. It's in the book. It's in the book, and, and it wasn't Andy Griffith. No, wasn't Andy. Andy Griffith was also on Capitol. Right. Yeah. But, Same label. I guess, as but, Deacon no, Andy right. Griffith. Okay, yeah. it's, it's entirely. I, I wouldn't make sense for Andy Griffith to have covered Johnny Stanley on Capitol, but it's definitely Johnny Stanley had the, the hit on that. Part. Okay, right. and then and then the next jump, well, I, I guess, was uh, was uh, uh, Ike Turner's uh, Rocket '88. Uh huh. Yeah, then, I mean, I'm talking the steps into what we know as rock and roll. Mm. Rocket 88 is 51. Well, right? we're, we're jumping around. Yeah, I was going to say. This, this is when you heard what. When I first heard the, the yeah. roots of what I yeah. first heard of rock and roll. That might have been, you'd, you might have heard it out of sequence, but that's what it did for you. Yes. You know, that's, that's when you. Uh, well, you know, the first record I bought, or actually stole, I think yeah. I shoplifted <laughs> it from a department well, store in Cleveland. Not a, not a Louis Jordan album, because the albums you're talking about are 578s. It's mm -hmm. hard, to, hard to heft that one out yeah. of the store. Um, in the winter time, you had big coats. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's, that was the East Coast. And all right, so I'm just. Pres I mean, I know you're an Elvis and Coasters and from the '50s and beyond rock and roll fan, but it doesn't mean that the first concert you saw was a rock and roll show. It could have been Frankie Lane, for that matter. But did you go to any particular interesting? I concerts? will tell you my history of rock and roll concerts in Cleveland, where I'm from. They used to have at the big theaters downtown, the Palace, the State, the Ohio. People like Danny Kay would come through, sure. Jack Benny. Uh, guys would come through and there'd, there'd be a movie, Lionel Hampton. First show I went to see Lionel Hampton with Son of Frankenstein. And I really went, I wanted to see Son of Frankenstein. And halfway through Son of Frankenstein, uh, the audience started yelling, we want Hamp, we want Hamp. I thought, I want, I want to see Son of Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going to a little town in Virginia, there was a rock and roll show. Mm -hmm. And Virginia is near to Cleveland? A couple, of, a couple of states over. It was <laughs> Richmond, Virginia. I had never seen a show. Each group came out and did one song uh -huh. and was gone. I remember it was Ling Ting Tong, the uh, Five Keys. Uh -huh. I mean, it, I had you never... Tony Alan Freed? Uh, that later, later when I moved to New York. But this is the first one I ever saw. He was, from, he was Cleveland, in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alan Freed was Moondog, and that's why yeah. Cleveland has the Hall of Fame. Right. right. But that's the first one that knocked me out. Each group would come up, do one song better than the other. I didn't know half the songs. Right. And I always remember a girl jumped up on stage and started to dance, and the security guard, a big black guy, walked over and tapped her on the shoulder. I said, oh, there's going to be trouble. She turned around. He started dancing with her. And I thought, oh, this is what it's all about. And I became a fan from yeah, then on. Absolutely. And then I saw many a show at the Apollo in New York. Oh, wow. I would never miss. I mean, when you look back at some of those shows, you could see the Drifters, the Coasters, Jackie Wilson. I was just the same night for six cents. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Um, off the subject, why has your hair... Hey. I've been out in the sun playing tennis, and you know, doing the surfing. surfing. Yeah, yeah. What's that about? <laughs> the chicks, and that's doing the cello. Yeah, is, right. uh, uh, I've just finished a movie, a Christopher Guest's latest, Selena's, called uh, A Mighty Wind. It's a musical theme, but it's a folk music. And, I'll, and it's, they are so phenomenal doing music. You know, Christopher Guest, Harry Shearer, uh -huh. uh, Michael McKean. So the, the joke isn't that they're bad musicians. Uh -huh. But it's a reunion of folk groups from the 60s. I play a sleazy manager of one of the groups who has a management outfit called High Class uh -huh. in a strip mall down in Miami. And I thought it'd be funny if I wore a, my hair dyed, you know, kind of an aging guy who's trying to look hip. And I wanted to wear an earring, but the, he, he ruled that out. <laughs> I think a couple of gold chains would have gotten you there. I, I, yeah, I, that, that, it was a gold chain guy, but I decided not to. But they gave me a little uh, stud. Or a pinky <laughs> ring? Oh, yes, that I did have a pinky good. ring. But I forgot to tap it on the desk when I liked something. <laughs> you know? Very nice. I like it. Well, we're always talking about music here, which we're not necessarily doing uh, TV movies. Let's talk about the middies now. There's a lot of going on there. That, <laughs> well, now, you, know, you mentioned the eighth. But yeah, I don't been, like but MIDI. You, but, you've been on, but you've been on vinyl. What was the first appearance that you were on? I'm talking to you. Uh, you were the, <laughs> you've been on vinyl. Haven't you? Ace Trucking, didn't they have it? Oh, yes. We did a, uh, an improv. It was a comedy group I was with. Out of where? Ace Trucking Company, out of New York. Uh -huh. And it, for some reason, they decided to do an improvised album, which I was against. I think it was <laughs> ridiculous to do an improvised album. But it was done for RCA, and they took us into the studio, and we improvised. But we never got some of our best stuff, set stuff down, which was very good. And um, 
uh, I, I always regretted that. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of it was we did about 50 Tonight Shows, so hmm. if you want to go back in those vaults and find them. Well, what if I wanted to have a, a complete Fred Willard record collection? How many would there be? One. <laughs> There's really, never, ne it? never a company or anything? No other comedy albums after that? No. I'm wow. trying to think. I don't think so. I, yes, I was on some you know, composite or some kind of album that yeah. someone did. Um, uh, but I forget, nothing to speak about. It wasn't my material. I actually did an album with Sandy Barron years yeah. ago. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, but I wouldn't go out and search for it. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Now, I've, I've seen you around on TV and stuff at different times, but of course, during the Mary Hartman era is when it all came to, you came in, is that when you came into prominence particularly? Yes, although I was not on Mary Hartman. I, I was on Fernwood Tonight, which came right out of Mary Hartman. Yeah, that was my first big, uh, step and I almost turned it down because I had just done a pilot for a, a sitcom and I was going to be a sitcom star. Uh -huh. And they said, well, you're going to be like uh, the Ed McMahon of a, and I said, no, no, I don't want. And I started Jerry recommending Hubbard, other people and... Uh, <laughs> Jerry Hubbard. Jerry Hubbard, <laughs> yes. But didn't, but didn't you work with a partner at one time? Yes, I, oh my God, you're going way back. Well, I'm just thinking stuff I picked up. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. When we started out, I was on the, Ed, the old Ed Sullivan show and uh, Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas and all those were the partner. We worked uh, at, in those days, he had a comedy circuit of uh, coffee houses. There were about six, from the Hungry Eye in, in, in San Francisco to the Bitter End in New York. And there were about six in between. That was be before the big explosion of comedy. And, and he had always opened for some folk singer. Mm -hmm. So all I'd hear is, put him in a cell with a long hose on him. Put him <laughs> and everyone would say, oh, he was here last, last, he was great. You know, we'd never get much, <laughs> you know, the singers. Smothers Brothers came by two weeks ago, they were great. Judy Henske, she was great. <laughs> and then we'd say, yeah, but well, we're going to do our little bits. <laughs> Want to buy a guitar, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, no, no, like uh, getting booed opening for Elvis or the Beatles or anything like that. Um, I'm sure we got. We, we were on once with uh, oh god, some English guy, guy on the Ed Sullivan show. He'd had one big hit record, and he, and it was I mean, John. Now we're ready for Jimmy Frenny, but first Greg and Willard, and, and then you hear the answer, what? Ooh, ooh, what? <laughs> So all those stories are completely true. Uh, two people I love stories about. One is Richard Nixon, and the other is Ed Sullivan. They were very similar, yeah. and they're the only two impressions I can do, too. <laughs> and, they, and, and Nixon always ends up as Ed Sullivan here on our show. <laughs> but just wonderful stories. That's I mean, they good. were just. If you do those two, you can do Mr. Ed. Oh, maybe I could. And yeah. that means you can do Johnny Cash. So you're oh. more versatile oh, than yeah. you think. I'm Johnny Cash. Yeah. Yes, so I guess I can. Talk you Wilbur. Tune, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Um, so we'll keep it on the musical side. Did you ever appear in musicals? Yes, I did. Anything goes. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Any, anything goes in the Libero Theater in Santa Monica. And I'm about to do it again at the Frood Playhouse at UCLA, I think, in August. Uh -huh. A completely different version of, of Anything Goes. And I love to sing. One of the high points of my career. No, the high point is being on the, uh, the, the, the Elvis. Not this yeah, show. Yeah. Although this is close to it, television. Yeah, yeah. Musically, being on your show, the first time I went on, and I called and I begged you, and you had to check yeah. with the band leader. And then you called back and he says, well, okay, but only one song. And I said, please, that's I didn't plenty. say that, but what I said was, the don't, band leader what said, I said was don't dress up. Don't dress up. No, 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 no cheeseburger well, jokes. No I said, you don't know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool Elvis fan. And I didn't. I did. You're right. I'm left. She's gone. Great song. Elvis's first, fifth release on Sun Records, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that was the highlight of my singing career. Yeah. But I, I had opened. I had worked in a stand-up act, and I'd opened with One Night with You, and I, I did. Uh, I think the Coasters song and a bunch of obscure, uh, a little bit of soap by the Jarmels and. Uh, the, and uh, so I, I was pleased. Just as I was about to go on, someone said to me, have you ever sung in the, before the public before? And I said, yes, I have. It felt good saying that. I think he was trying to you know, get me psyched. I said, yes, I have. <laughs> but I recently sang at a, a benefit for 9-11 uh, at um, Wadsworth Hall. I did a, an obscure Broadway sh uh, tune called um, Artificial flowers from uh, from Tenderloin. The Bobby Darren song, maybe. Yeah, yes, but he did the up version. Artificial flowers. But this was a sadder song, sadder version. Who asked, I had, but who asked Fred Willard to sing? How did you happen to sing at a benefit? I don't know. I was thrilled. The, the woman <laughs> who I'd done some show for uh, at, at Freud. Oh, I did Promises, Promises with Jason Alexander. And, oh, and you, which part? Uh, I did one of the. I was one of the businessmen. Oh, so what? How do you, if you're a man, find a girl? And uh, they asked me to sing. They didn't know if I could carry a whole song. And I went in there 
all barrels flying. A 1965 obscure Broadway show tune. I had three backup girl singers and a friend of mine on violin, and I, I wrung the neck of that song. And I did. Uh, <laughs> if you can I, get through promises, promises, because that's tricky. That, that is that very tricky. tricky. Well, Absolutely. oh yeah, look, it changed. And, yeah. and Jason and Alexander just wiped the floor with that show. He, I mean, he was really good, and, and they they came to see him because he's Jason Alexander, but he did a crack of the original male lead in it. Uh, yes, yes, the guy from uh, NYPD, uh, what, um, Law and Order, Jerry Orbach. Jerry Orbach, sure. And he was fantastic. Yes, I bet he was. You actually had contact with him vis-a-vis -vis things I, like that, right, with Orbach? Yeah, yeah, I spoke with him one afternoon about Richard Pryor, and then we wind up talking about Burt Backrack. And I'm just holding the phone, like, I don't believe I'm having this conversation. <laughs> you know, like, just about, uh, I've said this before, pretty much anybody, I don't care. Doug Figer, hell, I had to play the My Sharona guitar solo in bar bands, you know. Never once correctly, I might add. You know, like... But, it's not my solo. Yeah, but... I don't care. <laughs> but no, I mean, I had to do that tune. It's like all these people that are, to me, they're famous, but there have been a few people who I'm just like, in the face of Jerry Orbach, Joe Henderson, and Curtis Mayfield are like the three oh. that I was... You told me Fred Willard, but you're kind of bad oh, off now. Bad no, you're... I said I didn't want to speak to Fred Willard. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was another guy. Okay. <laughs> Jerry Arbuck also started in Fantastics. In Fantastics, 42nd Street. He did Beauty and the Beast. He plays Louis. Yeah. Yes, I mean, you don't, can't Beauty even recognize him. You know? And the, the 60s, when they finally staged Cradle Will Rock in the 60s. He was the... Yeah, he was the, the union What guy. early rock and roll song did Burt Bacharach write? And I fell off my chair. Very with many. What, the blob? Any day now. Baby, oh, baby Day now. Baby that's It's not, You. That's not uh, that's early. Baby, did he do it? Did he? Absolutely. Yeah, did See, I thought he was a show lady. tune. But here's no, the no, they no, but here's lots of Yeah, but you're you're kind of neglecting something. It's Back Rack and David, but it's not Hal David, it's Mac David. Mac David did the did Baby It's You. Yeah, it's that's you. what I'm saying. Yeah. Baby It's You. But he also did Beware of the Blob. Yeah, that's what I said, which is way before Baby It's You and Magic Moments and a few other oh, things. Magic no, Jerry not Coma? Magic Moments. Yeah, magic Moments. Oh, you wrote not, magic the, moments. not the platters. Jerry Coma. No. Oh, Magic. Oh, well, well that's okay. What are you thinking? And, and a Marty Robbins song that I forget the name of now. Uh. Uh, t Ike Turner has been overlooked as a seminal influence. I mean, he was one. I went down to see him once, drove miles down to see him. and uh, But all he did, he did covers of like 70s songs. That, I mean, he had such a history of great blues stuff. And no matter what you say, he discovered Tina yeah. Turner and made her yeah. Tina Turner. Reverend Willard, you're preaching to the converted. Yeah, oh, good, OK. I've got a question. He's one of the greats. Oh, good, good. He was a bad guy, but who cares? I'm not so sure. They say he was, yeah. What do you know? Were you there? Was I there? I don't know. Uh, I mean, he I signed up. I say, I say. No, but, say. but after OJ, like, <laughs> you, can, you can't be a wife beater and really make the cut anymore. So it's just done. You know? It must be. It must be tough to be married to Tina Turner too, and try to get her to. You know, Tina, where have you been? Yeah, well, <laughs> there are stories. Yes. Well, I sent you that. I emailed you that, guys. Uh, did you see the uh, my friend who was commented on going out to see the uh, best in show and was floored to see you in it, and that, that wasn't exactly scripted, was it? You no, know, it wasn't, no. <laughs> how much of, of those movies is scripted and how much is not? They, they send you a 15 to 20 page outline, and the first outline I got a Best in Show, they called me, they said, did you get it? I said, yes, but my character isn't in it. They said, oh, uh, we made a mistake, and they typed it back, it just says he sits and comments on <laughs> dogs. Now, they, they, they showed us some TV that they'd already shot, some video, and uh, they said, here's what you'll be commenting on. So we had a framework, right. and, and that was pretty much it. Half of it I'd pre-planned. I said, well, I got to go in so, with some pistols, uh, some bullets, and the rest just happened on and the spot. And how much in Guffman did, did you get to? All this right, just yeah, that, ready and action. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's, some of your lines are just, they're beyond. Yeah, thank you. And now, ironically, if I heard a movie was totally improvised, I would stay away from it. But there, there were such good people, and you were confined. I mean, you knew exactly where the movie was going. Right. So we didn't make up a movie. Uh, and you're working with Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy uh, and Christopher Guest, who, I mean, they're just geniuses. Yeah, and apparently those Second City guys know something about improvising. Yes, yes, and staying on the, on the nose and... Uh... But to have the punchlines come, that's oh, the yeah, most yeah, amazing I guess. thing is that is that you improvise this 
situation and then come to a, <laughs> to a hilarious punchline. Yeah. You know. Well, I thought about that a lot when I had to do this latest movie and suddenly I got cold feet. I said, oh my God, we're going in to do it again. Because you know, it's like anything. Sure. If someone told you some, Absolutely. some when you do so-and-so on stage, it's genius. Next time you get up, you say, oh, what am I doing there? That's I, I got you. <laughs> but I've never had to make it up on the spot. See, yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. I, you know, writing a song and making one up on the spot, there's... Yeah, there's a quantity of difference. Yes, yeah. yes. What, uh, about, what about making your leap into the getting? Why do you want to stand in front of people, anyways? I mean, why do you want to get up on the stage and have people look at you? When did that? When did that I think thing every come over we all had very probably sad childhoods, and <laughs> you know, look at me, you know, pay attention to me. I remember I, I, my my mother and father. My my father passed away. I was quite young. He was quite young. I remember staggering into the living room and falling down, hoping they'd think I was had passed out, and they would just continue to go ahead and read. And I think it was. Uh, <laughs> And then I once had to do a uh, a, um, a you speech. You think this is funny? I was asked to do a speech. I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't an abusive family, yeah. uh, but it just no, no one paid attention to me. You weren't the only kid, though, right? And I was I graduate. I was an only kid, and I was uh, I graduated from a military prep school, and I was called back to do a tribute to one of the guys. It was a fundraiser. And the guy actually stood up. He says, "You know, I don't." Rem he, he'd had a full-page picture in this as a senior. You know, he was the cadet major, the captain of the basketball team. And he says, "I looked through the yearbook, and he said I didn't see your picture in the yearbook." And he says, "How come you're in movies?" And I said, "That's because I never had a full-page picture in my year in the yearbook." And I think that's true. It was you want to get attention, and yet ironically. You'll stand backstage just before you go out and you think, why am I doing this? I don't want to be here. Uh -huh. But I think what you do, you make yourself so nervous. And I'd worked on that song, One Night With You. I would work on that song. And, you know, if you have to do 12 songs, I think it's easier than if you have to do you one. Know. You do one. Yeah, yeah. And so by the time you walk on, you can't wait to get on. But just before you're waiting backstage and the guy in front of you sounds great, I think you, were, you came after me. And the person in front of me was uh, uh, the guy from the uh, Little Darling. Yeah, da David da Somerville. Yeah. And what am I doing here? Why am I going to make a fool of myself? What's that first note? Ah, ah, ah. And I actually had the guitarist give me the first, you know, ah. And then he, where do I come in? Do I, and then he grabbed the, the mic and start. And I did think, I think I did hit a sour note, the first <laughs> note. But that's the question. Why? I think we all got up. Now, maybe do you, you don't, you're more, uh, mixing and all, so maybe you didn't have a. No. Did you have a happy childhood? <laughs> no, I had a horrible childhood. You know, I had like one of those, you know, how come everything fun costs money childhood? Yeah, yeah. You know, so we just kind of, um, we, we just kind of uh, created our own fun. Uh huh. And then we sort of thought, like, wow, this is really great. And there would be this parental, and stop doing that. Yeah. You're embarrassing us. Don't dance with those girls out there on the street. Ah, so now you were in charge of mixing, and you'd tell people what to do and well, no, he put does, it together. He's, he sings and performs also. Uh -huh. But uh, not at the Elvis show, not for a couple no, of years. Not Why for, not? Are you, a, you, you are an Elvis fan. He's been busy. I told you, my first, my first concert was Elvis. Um, I don't, you know. You know what it is? I did it a few years ago because there was a song I specifically really wanted to do that I knew, knew but nobody else in the world was going to touch. Uh, ah. Uh, which was from, I think, Charo. Or not Charo. <laughs> no, it's like a... Pardon me for laughing. I just no, it's a, that's why nobody's going to touch it. It's stuck in Charo. But after that, it's like... That was the movie that he played. We're almost out. We've got about three minutes care? left. That's so it doesn't matter what song played. it was. It was some yeah. great song that we didn't hear. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. just one of those things. But I've, I haven't had anything that I've really been dying to put into the Elvis oh. realm in a good long okay. time. Okay. Who's so, your favorite performer? Who, if you did a tribute to someone, who would it be to, to get up to sing one of their songs? Oh, uh, John Hartford. Really? That's interesting. I, what about you, Doug? If you had a, uh, who's your idol? Bobby Darren, probably. That's very interesting. You should have heard Doug doing Gene Pitney, though. We did a show together where he did 24 Hours from Tulsa better than Another Gene ever did Another David song. Another oh, senseless song. How can you be 24 hours from Hours from Tulsa, from Tulsa exactly. The, if you're, you're, where are you, walking, Siberia? Yeah, I mean, if you're right. taking a bus, it'll you get there from New York in 24 right. hours. You're you always hear this from guys hours. who have never written a song as good as 24 oh, Hours true. from Tulsa. Oh, okay. Larry Williams, there was a genius. Absolutely. Under, under, uh, underappreciated. I saw him many One times. One of the great pimps. Let me ask you why, um, let me ask you how... <laughs> the you... man's dead. <laughs> Give him a break. When you're dead, you get a break. Yeah.
Let me ask you about this comedy act where you came out and sung six songs. I mean, it's bad enough if you don't want to see a comedian, but he comes out and sings, too. This is a little bit much. It was right after Fernwood tonight. I got away with everything. My audience oh, came to see oh, me. Oh, I see. I did, I, 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 and I, I did uh, my observation. Were on you playing a guitar? No, or? no, I don't play. I had a... Um, a great band of guys, they, they did head charts. They, they had all played with every, you name it, and they played with them. And it was just, uh, what key do you do it in? And I didn't know. So he did, my, the guitars would have to give me, and I one night with you. So this is the Willard Post Fernwood solo tour? Yes. And, and when and people would come. This Dexter's Lab. How did you, uh, oh, sorry, Dexter's Lab. Tell that story real fast, and we'll go out on that. Could you roll in that uh, Dexter's Lab stuff at the, uh, over the credits, please? Thanks a lot, David. Uh, yeah. What is it? You Fred and Martin Mull and I worked together virtually. <laughs> but not in the virtually. same time. Virtually. Same. Not at the same time. Basically, they, uh, they yeah. called me to do the track for the song that Fred and Martin sang on in the cartoon Dexter's Laboratory, and wow. they sang on it. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> I can't. And so they you sang on it, and then you put the music to it. I don't want to go into this, because if the guys who wrote the tune in the first place are watching this, they're not going to be thrilled <laughs> that thought, this is getting out. I thought you wrote it. I did, and then what happened was the producers were not thrilled with what they did, so they said, keep the vocals, change everything else. Oh, so then you came and underscored it, so to speak. Something. Yeah, I just had to come up with a new tune. I see. But just keep the vocals. Wow, that sounds challenging. Yes, it was. <laughs> Are they going to do a biography of, uh, of um, uh, Bobby Darren with, I've what's heard, his name? Kevin I've Spacey. He's, he'd be perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Who would you, if you had to sing? Is Elvis your favorite? Uh, Jerry Lee. Oh man, that's well, a whole other thing. It's a shame for you yeah. where, the, where yeah. movies are concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been done already. You know that the, the more or less failure of that movie killed rock bios for a long time. For a little while, yeah. Because La Bamba had been a hit. They figured, well, let's do some more. And the Buddy Holly one had been a hit before that. A long time before that, yeah. like 10 years. I didn't think it was done well, what I saw. You, you're one? talking about the, the, the Jerry Lee. Well, I like it a lot. I mean, I'm a, I'm a hardcore Jerry Lee guy. And, and I, didn't I, he overdo it, the actor? Of course. Over yeah, the well, that's it. Well, it was a cartoon. The, it, it was a cartoon. He's over the top, but he did over the top over yeah. the top. It was a cartoon, and for that exactly. reason, it was fun. Hey, I'm not saying anything until the, they make the big bopper story. Okay. You know what I like. That'll be coming no, up soon. I'd like to see a big bopper movie. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's uh, on the way out. Let's take a listen to what's the name of this tune? Riding the Hog. Oh, Riding the Hog. That's the one you got recognized for in Philadelphia. That was the one where the this little kid walks up to me. I was playing at a jazz fest in Philly last week. A little kid walks up with his mother, and starts singing the song and doing the dance. No kidding. I, Blew me away. I was the happiest guy in life to see yeah. that. I didn't know people paid that much attention to, you know, music on half-hour cartoon shows. You know, Art, this is going to be a shock, but there is valid non-rock music in the world. Oh, but you okay. have to be 11 to be into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a listen. Maybe even look at the footage, or maybe not. We'll listen to the song on the way out. And uh, thanks very much, Fred, for coming by. It was a pleasure. You're on the, you're on right now, though, something like the 800th show. But you came to the 100th show party downtown. Put your wrists outside. in the air, rev them around like you just don't care, swing your hips like you do when you jog, now look at y'all, you're riding that hog. Oh, my God.